Bal Gangadhar Tilak or Lokmanya Tilak pronunciation the 23rd of July 1856 to the 1st of August 1920 born as Keshav Gangadhar Tilak was an Indian nationalist teacher lawyer and an independence activist he was the first leader of the Indian independence movement the British colonial authorities called him the father of the Indian unrest he was also conferred with the title of Lokmanya which means accepted by the people as their leader Tilak was one of the first and strongest advocates of Swaraj, self-rule, and a strong radical in Indian consciousness. He is known for his quote in Marathi, Swarajya is my birthright and I shall have it. He formed a close alliance with many Indian National Congress leaders including Bipin Chandra Pal, Lala Lajpat Rai, Aurobindo Ghosh, V. O. Chidambaram Pillai and Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Early life Tilak was born in a Marathi Chitpavan Brahmin family in Ritnagira as Keshav Gangadhar Tilak, in the headquarters of the eponymous district of present-day Maharashtra then British India on 23 July 1856. His ancestral village was Chikali. His father, Gangadhar Tilak was a school teacher and a Sanskrit scholar who died when Tilak was 16. In 1871 Tilak was married to Tapabai Nebal when he was 16, a few months before his father's death. After marriage, her name was changed to Satyabamabai. He obtained his Bachelor of Arts in first class in mathematics from Deccan College of Pune in 1877. He left his MA course of study midway to join the LL.B course instead, and in 1879 he obtained his LL.B degree from Government Law College. After graduating, Tilak started teaching mathematics at a private school in Pune. Later, due to ideological differences with the colleagues in the new school, he withdrew and became a journalist. Tilak actively participated in public affairs. He stated, Religion and practical life are not different, the real spirit is to make the country your family instead of working only for your own. The step beyond is to serve humanity and the next step is to serve God. Inspired by Vishnashastri Chiplunkar, he co-founded the New English School for Secondary Education in 1880 with a few of his college friends, including Gopal Ganesh Agalkar, Mahadev Balal Namjoshi, and Vishnashastri Chiplunkar. Their goal was to improve the quality of education for India's youth. The success of the school led them to set up the Deccan Education Society in 1884 to create a new system of education that taught young Indians nationalist ideas through an emphasis on Indian culture. The society established the Ferguson College in 1885 for post-secondary studies. Tillich taught mathematics at Ferguson College. In 1890, Tillich left the Deccan Education Society for more openly political work. He began a mass movement towards independence by an emphasis on a religious and cultural revival. <laughs> political career Tilak had a long political career agitating for Indian autonomy from the British rule. Before Gandhi, he was the most widely known Indian political leader. Unlike his fellow Maharashtrian contemporary, Gokhale, Tilak was considered a radical nationalist but a social conservative. He was imprisoned on a number of occasions that included a long stint at Mandalay. At one stage in his political life he was called the father of Indian unrest by British author Sir Valentine Churl. Indian National Congress Tilak joined the Indian National Congress in 1890. He opposed its moderate attitude, especially towards the fight for self-government. He was one of the most eminent radicals at the time. In fact, it was the Swadeshi movement of 1905-1907 that resulted in the split within the Indian National Congress into the moderates and the extremists despite being personally opposed to early marriage. Tilak was against the 1891 Age of Consent Bill, seeing it as interference with Hinduism and a dangerous precedent. The act raised the age at which a girl could marry from 10 to 12 years. During late 1896, a bubonic plague spread from Bombay to Pune, and by January 1897, it reached epidemic proportions. 
British troops were brought in to deal with the emergency and harsh measures were employed including forced entry into private houses, examination of occupants, evacuation to hospitals and segregation camps, removing and destroying personal possessions, and preventing patients from entering or leaving the city. By the end of May, the epidemic was under control. They were widely regarded as acts of tyranny and oppression. Tillich took up this issue by publishing inflammatory articles in his paper Kesari Kesari was written in Marathi, and Maratha was written in English, quoting the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, to say that no blame could be attached to anyone who killed an oppressor without any thought of reward. Following this, on the 22nd of June 1897, Commissioner Rand and another British officer, Lieutenant Ayerst were shot and killed by the Chapakar brothers and their other associates. According to Barbara and Thomas R. Metcalf, Tillich, "...almost surely concealed the identities of the perpetrators." Tillich was charged with incitement to murder and sentenced to 18 months' imprisonment. When he emerged from prison in present-day Mumbai, he was revered as a martyr and a national hero. He adopted a new slogan coined by his associate Kaka Baptista, "...swaraj is my birthright and I shall have it." Following the partition of Bengal, which was a strategy set out by Lord Curzon to weaken the nationalist movement, Tillich encouraged the Swadeshi movement and the boycott movement. The movement consisted of the boycott of foreign goods and also the social boycott of any Indian who used foreign goods. The Swadeshi movement consisted of the usage of natively produced goods. Once foreign goods were boycotted, there was a gap which had to be filled by the production of those goods in India itself. Tillich said that the Swadeshi and boycott movements are two sides of the same coin. Tillich opposed the moderate views of Gopal Krishna Gokhale, and was supported by fellow Indian nationalists Bipin Chandra Pal in Bengal and Lala Lajpat Rai in Punjab. They were referred to as the Lal Bal Pal Triumvirate. In 1907, the annual session of the Congress Party was held at Surat, Gujarat. Trouble broke out over the selection of the new president of the Congress between the moderate and the radical sections of the party. The party split into the radicals faction, led by Tillich, Pal and Lajpat Rai, and the moderate faction. Nationalists like Aurobindo Ghosh, V. O. Chidambaram Pillai were Tillich supporters. <laughs> Sedition charges During his lifetime among other political cases, Bal Gangadhar Tilak had been tried for sedition charges in three times by British India government—in 1897, 1909, and 1916. In 1897, Tilak was sentenced to 18 months in prison for preaching disaffection against the Raj. In 1909, he was again charged with sedition and intensifying racial animosity between Indians and the British. The Bombay lawyer Muhammad Ali Jinnah in Tilak's defense could not annul the evidence in Tilak's polemical articles and Tilak was sentenced to six years in prison in Burma. Imprisonment in Mandalay On 30 April 1908, two Bengali youths, Prafula Chaki and Kudaram Bose, threw a bomb on a carriage at Muzaffarpur, to kill the Chief Presidency Magistrate Douglas Kingsford of Calcutta fame, but erroneously killed two women travelling in it. While Chaki committed suicide when caught, Bose was hanged. Tillich, in his paper Kesari, defended the revolutionaries and called for immediate Swaraj or self-rule. The government swiftly charged him with sedition. At the conclusion of the trial, a special jury convicted him by 7-2 majority. The judge, Dinshaw D. Devar gave him a six years jail sentence to be served in Mandalay, Burma and a fine of 1,000 rupees. On being asked by the judge whether he had anything to say, Tillich said, All that I wish to say is that, in spite of the verdict of the jury, I still maintain that I am innocent. There are higher powers that rule the destinies of men and nations, and I think, it may be the will of providence that the cause I represent may be benefited more by my suffering than by my pen and tongue. In passing sentence, the judge indulged in some scathing strictures against Tillich's conduct. He threw off the judicial restraint which, to some extent, was observable in his charge to the jury. He condemned the articles as, seething with sedition, as preaching violence, speaking of murders with approval. You hail the advent of the bomb in India as if something had come to India for its good. I say, such journalism is a curse to the country." Tillich was sent to Mandalay from 1908 to 1914. 
While imprisoned, he continued to read and write, further developing his ideas on the Indian nationalist movement. While in the prison he wrote the Gita Rahasya, many copies of which were sold, and the money was donated for the Indian independence movement. Life after Mandalay Tilak developed diabetes during his sentence in Mandalay prison. This and the general ordeal of prison life had mellowed him at his release on 16 June 1914. When World War I started in August of that year, Tilak cabled the King Emperor George V of his support and turned his oratory to find new recruits for war efforts. He welcomed the Indian Councils Act, popularly known as Minto Morley Reforms, which had been passed by British Parliament in May 1909, terming it as, "...a marked increase of confidence between the rulers and the ruled." It was his conviction that acts of violence actually diminished, rather than hastening, the pace of political reforms. He was eager for reconciliation with Congress and had abandoned his demand for direct action and settled for agitations, "...strictly by constitutional means." A line advocated by his rival Gokhale. Tilak tried to convince Mohandas Gandhi to leave the idea of total non-violence, total ahimsa, and try to get self-rule, swarajya, by all means. Topic: <laughs> All India Home Rule League. Later, Tilak reunited with his fellow nationalists and rejoined the Indian National Congress in 1916. He also helped found the All India Home Rule League in 1916-18, with G. S. Coppard and Annie Besant. After years of trying to reunite the moderate and radical factions, he gave up and focused on the Home Rule League, which sought self-rule. Tilak travelled from village to village for support from farmers and locals to join the movement towards self-rule. Tillich was impressed by the Russian Revolution, and expressed his admiration for Vladimir Lenin. The League had 1,400 members in April 1916, and by 1917 membership had grown to approximately 32,000. Tillich started his Home Rule League in Maharashtra, Central Provinces, and Karnataka and Berar region. Besant's League was active in the rest part of India. Tilak progressed into a prominent nationalist after his close association with Indian nationalists following the partition of Bengal. When asked in Calcutta whether he envisioned a Maratha type of government for independent India, Tilak replied that the Maratha dominated governments of 17th and 18th centuries were outmoded in the 20th century, and he wanted a genuine federal system for free India where every religion and race was an equal partner. He added that only such a form of government would be able to safeguard India's freedom. He was the first Congress leader to suggest that Hindi written in the Devanagari script be accepted as the sole national language of India. <inaudible> <inaudible> Religio-political views Tilak sought to unite the Indian population for mass political action throughout his life. For this to happen, he believed there needed to be a comprehensive justification for anti-British pro-Hindu activism. For this end, he sought justification in the supposed original principles of the Ramayana and the Bhagavad Gita. He named this call to activism Karma Yoga or the Yoga of Action. In his interpretation, the Bhagavad Gita reveals this principle in the conversation between Krishna and Arjuna when Krishna exhorts Arjuna to fight his enemies, which in this case included many members of his family, because it is his duty. In Tilak's opinion, the Bhagavad Gita provided a strong justification of activism. However, this conflicted with the mainstream exegesis of the text at the time which was predominated by renunciate views and the idea of acts purely for God. This was represented by the two mainstream views at the time by Ramanuja and Adi Shankara. To find support for this philosophy, Tilak wrote his own interpretations of the relevant passages of the Gita and backed his views using Jnanadeva's commentary on the Gita, Ramanuja's critical commentary and his own translation of the Gita. His main battle was against the renunciate views of the time which conflicted with worldly activism. To fight this, he went to extents to reinterpret words such as karma, dharma, yoga as well as the concept of renunciation itself. Because he found his rationalization on Hindu religious symbols and lines, this alienated many non-Hindus such as the Muslims who began to ally with the British for support. <laughs> Social views 
Tillich was strongly opposed to liberal trends emerging in Pune such as women's rights and social reforms against untouchability. <laughs> women's issues Tillich vehemently opposed the establishment of the first native girls' high school now called in Pune in 1885 and its curriculum using his newspapers, the Maratha and Kesari. Tillich was also opposed to intercaste marriage, particularly the match where an upper caste woman married a lower caste man. In the case of Dashasthas, Chitpawans and Karhades, he encouraged these three Maharashtrian Brahmin groups to give up caste exclusiveness and intermarry. Tillich officially opposed the Age of Consent Bill which raised the age of marriage from 10 to 12 for girls, however he was willing to sign a circular that increased age of marriage for girls to 16 and 20 for boys. In his opinion, self-rule took precedence over any social reform. Child bride Rukmabai was married at the age of 11 but refused to go and live with her husband. The husband sued for restitution of conjugal rights, initially lost but appealed the decision. On 4 March 1887, Justice Farron, using interpretations of Hindu laws, ordered Rukmabai to go live with her husband or face six months of imprisonment. Tillich approved of this decision of the court and said that the court was following Hindu dharmasastras. Rukmabai responded that she would rather face imprisonment than obey the verdict. Her marriage was later dissolved by Queen Victoria. Later, she went on to receive her Doctor of Medicine degree from the London School of Medicine for Women. In 1890, when an 11 year old Fulamani Bai died while having sexual intercourse with her much older husband, the Parsi social reformer Bayram G. Malabari supported the Age of Consent Act, 1891 to raise the age of a girl's eligibility for marriage. Tillich opposed the bill and said that the Parsis as well as the English had no jurisdiction over the Hindu religious matters. He blamed the girl for having defective female organs," and questioned how the husband could be "...persecuted diabolically for doing a harmless act." He called the girl one of those "...dangerous freaks of nature." Tillich did not have a progressive view when it came to gender relations. He did not believe that Hindu women should get a modern education. Rather, he had a more conservative view, believing that women were meant to be homemakers who had to subordinate themselves to the needs of their husbands and children. Untouchability Tillich refused to sign a petition for the abolition of untouchability in 1918, two years before his death, although he had spoken against it earlier in a meeting. Esteem for Swami Vivekananda Tillich and Swami Vivekananda had great mutual respect and esteem for each other. They met accidentally while traveling by train in 1892 and Tillich had Vivekananda as a guest in his house. A person who was present there Basukaka, heard that it was agreed between Vivekananda and Tillich that Tillich would work towards nationalism in the «political» arena, while Vivekananda would work for nationalism in the «religious» arena. When Vivekananda passed away at a young age, Tillich expressed great sorrow and paid tributes to him in the Kesari. Tillich said about Vivekananda, no Hindu, who, has the interests of Hinduism at his heart, could help feeling grieved over Vivekananda's samadhi. Vivekananda, in short, had taken the work of keeping the banner of Advaita philosophy forever flying among all the nations of the world and made them realize the true greatness of Hindu religion and of the Hindu people. He had hoped that he would crown his achievement with a fulfillment of this task by virtue of his learning, eloquence, enthusiasm and sincerity, just as he had laid a secure foundation for it, but with Swami's Samadhi these hopes have gone, thousands of years ago, another saint, Shankaracharya, who, showed to the world the glory and greatness of Hinduism. At the fag of the 19th century, the second Shankaracharya is Vivekananda, who, showed to the world the glory of Hinduism. His work has yet to be completed. We have lost our glory, our independence, everything. Topic: <laughs> Conflicts with Shahu over caste issues. Shahu had several conflicts with Tilak as the latter agreed with the Brahmin decision of Puranic rituals for the Marathas that were intended for Shudras. Tilak even suggested that the Marathas should be content with the Shudra status assigned to them by the Brahmins. 
Tillich's newspapers as well as the press in Kolhapur criticized Shahu for his caste prejudice and his unreasoned hostility towards Brahmins. These included serious allegations such as sexual assaults by Shahu against four Brahmin women. An English woman named Lady Minto was petitioned to help them. The agent of Shahu had blamed these allegations on the troublesome Brahmins. Tilak and another Brahmin suffered from the confiscation of estates by Shahu, the first during a quarrel between Shahu and the Shankaracharya of Sankareshwar and later in another issue. <laughs> Social contributions and legacy Tilak started two weeklies, Kesari, the Lion. In Marathi and Maratha in English, sometimes referred as Maratha in academic study books, in 1880 to 81, with Gopal Ganesh Agalkar as the first editor. By this, he was recognized as Awakener of India, as Kesari later became a daily and continues publication to this day. In 1894, Tilak transformed the household worshipping of Ganesha into a grand public event, Sarvahanik Ganeshatsav. The celebrations consisted of several days of processions, music, and food. They were organized by the means of subscriptions by neighborhood, caste, or occupation. Students often would celebrate Hindu and national glory and address political issues, including patronage of Swadeshi goods. In 1895, Tilak founded the Sri Shivaji Fund Committee for celebration of Shiv Janti, the birth anniversary of Chhatrapati Shivaji, the founder of the Maratha Empire. The project also had the objective of funding the reconstruction of the tomb Samadhi of Shivaji at Raigad Fort. For this second objective, Tilak established the Sri Shivaji Raigad Smarak Mandal along with Senapati Khandarao Dabade II of Talagaon Dabade, who became the founder-president of the Mandal. The events like the Ganapati festival and Shiv Janti were used by Tilak to build a national spirit beyond the circle of educated elite in opposition to colonial rule but it also exacerbated Hindu-Muslim differences. The festival organizers would urge Hindus to protect cows and boycott the Muharram celebrations organized by Shia Muslims, in which Hindus had formerly often participated. Thus, although the celebrations were meant to be a way to oppose colonial rule, they also contributed to religious tensions. Contemporary Marathi Hindu nationalist parties like the Shivsena took up his reverence for Shivaji. However, Indian historian, Uma Chakravarti cites Professor Gordon Johnson and states, "...it is significant that even at the time when Tilak was making political use of Shivaji the question of conceding Kshatriya status to him as Maratha was resisted by the conservative Brahmins including Tilak. While Shivaji was a brave man, all his bravery, it was argued, did not give him the right to a status that very nearly approached that of a Brahmin." Further, the fact that Shivaji worshipped the Brahmanas in no way altered social relations, since it was as a Shudra he did it, as a Shudra the servant, if not the slave, of the Brahman." The Deccan Education Society that Tilak founded with others in the 1880s still runs institutions in Pune like the Ferguson College. The Swadeshi movement started by Tilak at the beginning of the 20th century became part of the independence movement until that goal was achieved in 1947. One can even say Swadeshi remained part of Indian government policy until the 1990s when the Congress government liberalized the economy. Tilak Smarak Ranga Mandir, a theatre auditorium in Pune, is dedicated to him. In 2007, the Government of India released a coin to commemorate the 150th birth anniversary of Tilak. Tilak said, I regard India as my motherland and my goddess, the people in India are my kith and kin, and loyal and steadfast work for their political and social emancipation is my highest religion and duty." Lokmanya, Ek Yug Puresh is a film released on January 2, 2015 based on his life. Directed by Om Raut, Tilak is played by actor Subod Bhavi. Books. In 1903, he wrote the book The Arctic Home in the Vedas. In it, he argued that the Vedas could only have been composed in the Arctics, and the Aryan bards brought them south after the onset of the last ice age. He proposed a new way to determine the exact time of the Vedas. In The Orion, he tried to calculate the time of Vedas by using the position of different nakshatras. Positions of nakshatras were described in different Vedas. Tilak authored 
Shrima Bhagavad Gita Rahasya. In prison at Mandalay, the analysis of karma yoga in the Bhagavad Gita, which is known to be gift of the Vedas and the Upanishads. Topic: <laughs> Descendants. Tilak's son, Sridhar was a campaigner for social reforms in India. Sridhar's son, Jayantrao Tilak (1921–2001), was editor of the Kesari newspaper for many years. Jayantrao was also a politician from the Congress Party. He was a member of the Parliament of India representing Maharashtra in the Rajya Sabha, the upper house of the Indian Parliament. He was also a member of the Maharashtra Legislative Council. Rohit Tilak, a descendant of Bal Gangadhar Tilak, is a Pune based Congress Party politician. In 2017, a woman with whom he had an extramarital affair accused him of rape and other crimes. He is currently out on bail in connection with these charges. <laughs> 